artists and welcome back to Art at Heart. If you're new here, this is a crafting and DIY channel. Today we're going to be making our own cheese board. Now I'm not going to say the other name for this because I know I'm totally going to botch it. So here it is right here. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. You're going to open up Adobe Illustrator and select the pen tool. Now you want to make sure that you are just drawing lines and how you do this is once you have selected the pen, you go to the top of the toolbar. So at near the top of the screen, there's two little boxes. And the first box, which is solid, you wanna make sure that that is a solid white box with a red slash through it. That will make sure you are making not shapes, but lines. And then I started out by just tracing the outline of the photo. You wanna make sure that some of these individual lines are on different layers or else you'll run into issues of them wanting to connect to each other and it just becomes a mess. Next, I used the circular pen tool. I'm not sure of the official name for that specific pen tool, but it allows you to make more rounded edges for the lens. And I actually adjusted the, I don't really know what it's called, but there's a selection at the top of the screen where you can make the lines skinnier at the ends or thicker in the middle or thicker at the ends. And I just played around with that until I found something that I liked. This Polaroid camera has a lot of rounded edges. Uh, I personally would recommend it if you decide to go with something similar to this rendering to choose something that has either more straight edges or make the camera have more straight edges which I ended up doing in the actual wood burning part of it but it's easier to do it in this portion rather than like figuring it out as you go so choosing an item that's maybe more rigid and square would be ideal for the wood burning. In Illustrator it's much easier to do little little segments when you're using the curve tool because it'll want to make it as circular as possible which isn't what you want for this and if you feel like you're getting stuck I would recommend stopping and starting a new layer and just kind of starting a new line I found is the easiest thing. Obviously you want to attach it so it looks like it's one line, even though it's technically going to be two. Also, I think I forgot to mention, but for your image photo, I highly recommend putting that on a separate layer and locking that layer. So then you can go back and click the little I button and see what your image is looking like without the bottom image. So you can make sure that your design is looking good thus far. A mistake I'm commonly making is not labeling my layers. Um, ultimately, that's your decision, but it's a lot more simple if you name those. So if you mess up, you can go back, you can fix the little error that you found, and it's just a lot easier to figure out what layer to go to to make a correction to whatever you find is problematic. For the most part, the rest you have to do in Illustrator is just trace the full photo and add your own little embellishments that makes this design truly your own. Also, I will say I did not trace the hands or the person because I need that in my design. So yeah, if your image has things that you don't want, it is easily uh, fixed. I also played around with the thicknesses of different lines to really give the image its own pizzazz. 
So I think I made the lenses lines thicker, um, some of the outline lines bolder. It's really up to you what you want to do, um, but it also comes down to whether or not you can actually burn it that way. I struggled a little bit, and so most of my lines ended up being pretty similar in the end. But, you know, shoot high, guys, and you can always uh, hit a little lower, and that's just okay. But that happens when you try new things, you know? I decided to make the viewfinder square just an actual square instead of a rounded square. Um, and then I actually added a few tinier squares inside to give it a little bit more detail. I added a couple of extra little circles in the lens and as, as you can see I played with uh, the width of the lines of those lenses and now I am just adding some text that will say, say cheese. And of course you can play around with different fonts, different sizes. But once again, when it comes to the actual wood burning, I think it's probably going to be very basic lettering if you're doing this for the first time like I was. Once you are happy with your design, you want to save it as a PNG file. And I would also recommend saving it as an Illustrator file too, just in case you want to go back and change something. So these are the cheese boards I got. I got these from Target for $5, guys. I don't know if they have them anymore, but they were such a steal. Here's what they look like out of the package. And then these were my designs. I'm not going to do the mouse one just because that's too much work, but just to kind of give you an idea of other things you can do. Next, you're going to take your pencil and spread the graphite out like that and place your image right there. And you want to cut it to the size so it's small. Also for this portion, when you're tracing out your image, I found that using a non-mechanical pencil works much better the second time I did this. And then you pull it off and you should see a light sketch of your design. Um, I actually went ahead and went back over it with pencil to make sure I could see those lines when it comes to the wood burning. So here is me starting the wood burning process. I tried to show you guys the different tips I used, but for the life of me, I could not get the camera to focus on them. So this one was slightly angular, and I found that this one worked best by just holding it down and letting it burn, and it made these fantastic little lines. Um, I This is actually the second time I did this. The first time I used a different tip, and it was like super hard. Um, this one is a little circular tool, which I'm actually going to use for some of the little buttons on the camera. And then this is more of a pointy tool, which I'm using for the larger button and the lenses. And I found that kind of angling that tool helped a lot with that process, especially for the letters. 
lettering is really hard, guys. <laughs> uh, this was a huge struggle. This was one of the parts that I messed up on the other board. Um, as well as, like, it's really easy to make the lines longer than they're supposed to, which is super frustrating. So go slow, guys. Don't feel like you have to rush it. Also, you can't hold it close like you can for a pencil. So it makes it difficult in that sense. And here is the final product. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, this is Brianna signing off.